Good evening. Welcome to the PM services of the Northfield Church of Christ for Sunday, August the 6th. We will sing four songs and have a couple of prayers, and I will deliver a lesson to you that I hope will be helpful and uh, take you through the evening. And so, uh, if you have your songbooks, and I am singing from the songbook Songs of Faith and Praise, the one that we use in our church building, uh, I'd like you to turn your books to page 100 and 101. The song is called Holy Ground. We use both pages in this song. Okay, is everybody ready? This is holy ground, we're standing on holy ground, for the Lord is present, and where he is, is holy. This is holy ground, we're standing on holy ground. We will, Lord, is present, and where he is, is holy. We are standing on holy ground, and I know that there are angels all around. Let us praise Jesus now. Standing in his presence on holy ground. You are holy God, a perfect and holy God. We welcome before you with hearts made clean by Jesus' blood. You are holy God, a perfect and holy God. We welcome before you with hearts made clean by Jesus' blood. We are standing on holy ground, and I know that there are angels all around. Let us praise Jesus now. We are standing in his presence. We are standing in his presence. We are standing in his presence on holy ground. Turn your books to number 555. This is Siki first. We had a lady who used to go to church with us that uh, had a wonderful way to remember the verses so that we wouldn't confuse them. The first one is seek you first, and next is ask, and next is man. She said you just had to remember Sam. I'll remember her for that. 555. 
Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be opened unto you, singing Alleluia, Alleluia. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto your singing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be open unto your singing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Man shall not live my bread alone, but by every word. Knock and the door shall be opened unto your singing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Singing hallelujah, hallelujah. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Singing hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, she gave me the way to remember it, and I forgot the words anyway. Turn your books to number 68, 6, 8. After this song, we'll have a prayer together. 68, the title of the song is Give Thanks. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks. Give thanks. Give thanks. Let's have a prayer together. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for a little time that we can uh, set aside this Sunday evening to sing praises to your name, offer prayers to you, and uh, get into your word for just a few moments so that uh, uh, we will know the truths that are found there. Uh, we know, dear Heavenly Father, that you are our uh, one and only God, and Jesus is your one and only Son. And we just give you praise for sending Jesus to us at the very 
exact time when he needed to come to earth. We pray, dear Heavenly Father, that we'd be appreciative of, of what we have. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, to cast our cares on you uh, because your shoulders are so much larger than any ones that we know. We thank you that Jesus was willing to give up his life that we might live. And we pray, dear Heavenly Father, that each day that we would walk our walk in such a way to make you proud. Uh, be with us through this service this evening. Bless us. I ask this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. And our last song will be 172. 172. It's called, I Just Came to Praise the Lord. I just came to praise the Lord. I just came to praise the Lord. I just came to praise His holy name. I just came to praise the Lord. I just came to thank the Lord. I just came to thank the Lord. I just came to praise His holy name. I just came to thank the Lord. I just came to love the Lord. I just came to love the Lord. I just came to praise His holy name. I just came to love the Lord. Okay, we are done with the song part of our service. And for just a few moments, we're going to get into the Lord's Word. And uh, my thought for this Sunday evening is conquering fear. Conquering, actually, worry. Uh, I, uh, I keep hitting this thing over the head. Uh, obviously, we are in a very, very, very strange time that people will talk about for years and years and years. Our lives have been kind of uh, turned upside down. Uh, for a while, we really quarantined ourselves. Now we've tried to kind of loosen that quarantine. And uh, we just uh, uh, haven't had a, an ordered life, have we? Uh, we don't go out to all of our favorite restaurants. Uh, we are reluctant to go to places where there are people that we don't know. Even though we wear masks and we socially distance, uh, we still uh, are in midst of a time that is uh, compromising to us on uh, several different levels. With that in mind, I'm reminded of a song uh, that was uh, a one-hit wonder for uh, a singer by the name of Bobby McFerrin. Bobby McFerrin sang the song. The song was written by Bob Marley. And the song was, Don't worry, be happy. For those of you in, in my genre, uh, if you remember when that song came out, it was on everybody's lips. When people would uh, suffer a little angst in their life, it was very, very easy for somebody to say to us, Don't worry. Be happy. He said words like, in every life, we have some trouble. But when you worry, you make it double. Don't worry. Be happy. Now, with that in mind, let's take a look and see what worry actually is. Worry, according to the Greek word, means dividing the mind. And that happens when we start worrying. When we start worrying, our minds get delighted. 
Our hopes pull us in one direction and our fears pull us in the opposite direction. And so we're torn. And sometimes we just don't know which direction we're supposed to go. Now, in Old English, the root word for worry means to strangle, to literally strangle. Worry literally strangles the life from us. It literally can affect the physical strength of the body. How many of you have heard the term, when in doubt, all right, what do we follow that with? When in doubt, <laughs> when in doubt, do what your dad used to do. <laughs> when in doubt, do what your mom taught you. Well, for Christians, when in doubt, turn to the Lord's word. <laughs> Here's where we conquer all of our doubts. And by the way, here's where we conquer our worries. For those of you who know me very much, you know that my favorite book in the Bible is the book of Philippians. And perhaps my favorite chapter is the fourth chapter. And I, I quote these verses many times in my sermons. In Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. You can probably quote the words. If you've listened to me, you can quote them from memory of listening to me. It says, be anxious for nothing. That means don't worry. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I want us to notice two very key words in this. It says, guard your hearts and your minds. The two sources of worry are our feelings, our hearts, and our mind. If we can't get our minds settled, then our feelings will run rampant. But if we can get our minds settled, our feelings will more likely be calm. Now, I am a firm believer that our Bibles are inspired by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit injected itself into the Apostle Paul's thoughts and therefore into his pen. And he gave instructions how to calm the heart and settle the mind. And he gives three parts of our communication with God. And these three parts are found in Philippians uh, chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Okay, it says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, here's part one, by prayer. Now, prayer indicates that we believe in a superior and a supreme being. Thus, we recognize God as the answer we recognize God as the greater power than we. We very often can't see through the problem, yet he sees it all. In Isaiah uh, chapter 46 and verse 47, the prophet Isaiah says, declaring the end from the beginning. God knows that. He knows our beginning and he knows our end. And since he knows how everything is going to end anyway, shouldn't we tap into that information and trust his guidance? Now, the writer of the book of Proverbs puts it in a, uh, you know, uh, and, and Proverbs 
has a way of uh, cutting through all of the red tape and getting to the heart of the matter. In, uh, in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, the writer says, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. We need that straight path to guide our divided mind. The mind can get divided. We try to get it on a straight path. And by praying, I believe that we acknowledge our insufficiency. We acknowledge our inability. And so prayer is, is a form of worship. Therefore, we are honoring him as our creator and we're appealing, we're appealing to his care, to the care that he has for us. We have some famous words in 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 and 7. Again, favorite verses of all of ours. Peter writes, Therefore, Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you at the proper time. Now get this, casting all your anxiety on him. Why? Because he cares for you. God cares for us. And so he says, humble yourselves before him and cast your anxiety on him. And so the, the first part of our communication with God is prayer. Secondly, in Philippians uh, chapter 4, verses 6 through 7, he says, uh, in everything by prayer and supplication. Supplication. Very simply, supplication means to seek or to ask or to get fancy to entreat to seek or ask by prayer we approach god through supplication we plead to god for help huh through supplication we plead to god so do you see how prayer and supplication go together? Our prayer is our approach to God. Supplication is pleading with God for help. Now, I sang uh, song number 555. The second verse of that song is our next scripture. In Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 and 11, from the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. If you then, being evil, know how, much, how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will you give to your Father who is in heaven? Give what is good to those who ask him. So God says, I want you to seek me. I want you to ask. I want you to, if you expect to find, I want you to knock on that door. That's supplication. That's our plea to God that's tied to our prayer. It's tied to um, our initial communication with the Lord as we approach God. All right, so we have prayer and supplication. Now let's go back to Philippians 4, 6, and 7. It says, in everything by prayer and and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be known to God and so the third uh, 
the, the third part of our communication with God after prayer, after our, our uh, plea to God, after our, uh, our communication, as we open up our communication uh, to God, as we approach God, and our supplication when we plea for God. Third is thanksgiving. Do you remember teaching your kids when they ask for something? Maybe you use the same term that many parents use. You might say, what are the magic words? Right? You wanted please, didn't you? And after you gave it to them, you wanted the other magic word. You wanted the word thank you. If, if we were as feeling about that with our children, how much more so should we be with our God? Our thanksgiving ought to be offered to God before we even know what God's answer is to our prayers. Now, in 1 John chapter 3, verses 21 and 22, John says this, Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. And whatever we ask, we receive from him, because we keep his commandments and do the things that are pleasing in his sight. Do we notice that there's a conditional nature to this? Whose prayers does God answer? Well, if I read uh, John correctly, it says, those that keep his commandments. God's answer is conditioned upon whether or not we are going to keep his commandments, and do what is pleasing in his sight. God desires that we live good and holy and righteous and godly lives. He's, he's dotted the scriptures with all of these superlative characteristics and virtues. We can't help but go uh, to Philippians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, uh, Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, where we find the fruit of the Spirit. And he says, you should engender these characteristics. What the underlying tone of all this is that if you want to live godly, moral, and righteous lives, these have to be your credo. This has to be the mantra that you live by. You know, we serve an all-knowing God. And we know that God knows our needs before we even ask. We can have a settled mind rather than a divided mind. We can be released from the stranglehold of worry. Both our feelings and facts can have confidence. And as we are working our way through uh, a time where people naturally are anxious, let's do three things. Let's go to Philippians chapter 4 verses 6 and 7 and parse those scriptures just a little bit and say to ourselves, be anxious for nothing. In other words, don't worry. Don't worry. But in everything, by prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. God gives us the antidote for worry. 
He gives us the antidote for the division of our minds and our hearts. He keeps worry from having a stranglehold on us. Let's take that with us tonight. And so as you, as you uh, watch this, maybe on Sunday evening, uh, you can go to bed with a little softer pillow, knowing that God is there and he wanted, wants to take care of those anxious moments. Let's all pray together. Our God and Heavenly Father, we again thank you for the time that we've had. Uh, I pray that uh, many will watch this through the medium of YouTube and uh, will be uplifted by our praise to you, that our prayers will have reflected the prayers that they may have made to you, and that the words that we uh, have shared from your word will be beneficial to each of us in a, in a time where uh, the world is anxious and there is so much worry. I pray, dear Heavenly Father, that you'd bless us. Help us to find the comfort that uh, is beyond understanding. Because as we read uh, verse 7 of Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, if we come to you in prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, it, it tells us the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. We're looking, dear Heavenly Father, for that peace, and we know that it comes in you. Bless us this evening. Continue to bless us through our whole lives. I pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. May God bless you all. I'm in the way, the bright and shining way. I'm in the glory land, glory land way. Telling the world that Jesus saves today. Yes, I'm in the glory land, glory land way.